by 1927, I figured I had to broaden my basic knowledge of painting and artists, and I decided it was time to take a year off to go to Paris, which was the usual uh, trip for any artist at that time to widen his uh, viewpoint. And in Paris, I met Alexander Calder and a number of other artists, and we were very sociable in going to uh, big events that were on in Paris, and also I was influenced by the exhibitions that were taking place throughout the neighborhood. Uh, I had an apartment with two boys, and we had the, uh, a modern apartment in the Rue de Seine, which was the uh, center for a lot of the uh, new art galleries that were coming up showing the work of uh, the various new painters. After returning to the States, Max held his first one-man show of watercolors at the Civic Club in 1929. 1931 was a year of traveling in France. Max spent most of his time painting in Saint-Tropez and Concarno, and by 1933 he returned again to Kingston. I, I had finished high school in Kingston, and my father was there, so that uh, I figured I had uh, the, the use of the uh, a place to stay and also uh, the wonderful landscape around Kingston, which was uh, very varied, and uh, I made quite a number of very good paintings right directly on the spot. Later on, when I was uh, doing most of the work in New York City itself, I did mostly watercolors to start with. If I could, I would have liked to have uh, gotten the canvas to work directly on the scene. But uh, many times I found that it was impossible because it would, it would draw too many people to what I was doing so that uh, a sketch or a watercolor, which was done in a fairly uh, uh, short space of time, and uh, I took color notations so that I was able to work the oils. And I learned to work the oils uh, easier from the color sketches than if I had been on the scene, because I was able to uh, uh, edit the paintings a little more and uh, uh, simplify them or change the color or, or uh, do whatever I felt was necessary. Well, I think of, of the artists working in the 1930s, Max Cohn did some of the strongest urban images. I mean, he, Max depicted the um, excitement of the industrial age with the um, urban landscape. Um, he was a, just a tremendous technician, um, a, tremend a fantastic sense for color, composition, and just created some of the most effective um, images of um, New York City during the 1930s. I think one of the things that sort of separates him out from other artists of the 30s, 40s is he has a particularly beautiful palette. Um, instead of going for the kind of primary cubist monochromatic palette of gray or dull uh, black, dull green, uh, kind of a tan color. He uses subdued colors, but they're rich and they're logical for the objects that he's portraying. And I think it creates a kind of a, a juiciness and a beauty to his paintings, which um, some artists lack for the same period. In 1934, Max joined the PWAP, which was the Public Works of Art Project, the predecessor of the WPA. From 1936 to 1939, Max worked on the Easel Project of the WPA. He earned $26 a week from the government to produce a total of 26 paintings.
I said Max was a WPA artist and sort of a classic WPA artist in that he um, really was interested in the world around him, he was interested in depicting the times, um, though in the same way that many WPA artists um, did, he didn't paint bread lines, he didn't paint Hoovervilles, um, he really um, wasn't, his work doesn't make tremendous political statements. Rather, he was in some more of the, the tradition of the Ashcan painters, depicting the world around him. Um, sometimes it wasn't pretty. Um, sometimes he did make the city very beautiful in terms of the um, geometry of the road, the lampposts, the storefronts, the signs, which he had. I think he had a particular um, passion for including signs in his works. Um, and, uh, you know, but he just, uh, just sort of a classic WPA artist. It's the overall, I think, sense of um, emotion or atmosphere that he's able to convey. Um, and some of it is the, is the planning out of the painting where he's balanced all of the geometry of the picture so it works. But a lot of it also is the lighting that he manages to get. His sky is very important and, and you really kind of sense with his best pictures what time of day it is and what season and almost how the people that are in the picture are feeling. During that period, Max executed a series of four lithographs. Lithography, it's a very time-consuming, laborious process he was a master at achieving the delicate um, nuances, really, in the medium. We, at the museum, we have three of his lithographs in the collection. And again, they're just wonderful um, documents, artistically and as historical documents, of the period of workers on a lunch break under skyscrapers or um, under bridges. In 1934, the ACA Gallery held a one-man show that was well-received. Shortly thereafter, Max married Sarah Waldstein, and they took a six-month honeymoon to Mexico. I had just married and decided on a honeymoon, and the best place, the cheapest place, would be to go down to Mexico. We found that the boat accommodations were very reasonable, about $100 on a uh, Spanish line, and uh, we decided to... Uh, stay in Mexico about six months and the cost of the whole trip for the six months was about six hundred dollars. It's average about a dollar a day for the two of us and that was lodging and food so that uh, it made everything very reasonable. The uh, country and also the people appealed to us. The uh, country was just then in the midst of the biggest uh, art revolution, uh, Siqueiros and uh, Rivera and uh, uh, some of the others were doing the finest uh, mural work anywhere. And it was an influence on my work for a while. Uh, I was doing uh, mostly fig uh, paintings of the uh, people itself. When I came back to New York again, the influences uh, that had gone on before had almost evaporated, and I decided to branch out on my own as much as possible by doing a field of painting that was not being done by anybody else. Uh, that is the uh, industrialization of uh, uh, America at the time.